Now introducing your 2015 Illini Drive All-Stars. The sophomore social media guru from Naperville, Illinois, Mr. Jeff Omer. Second, the senior co-host and one half of the Twin Towers from St. Charles, Illinois, Steve Bourbon. Third, his counterpart, the always sarcastic and a fan of no team on the show, senior co-host Sam Sherman. Then we have the new guy on the squad whose favorite word is crucial when talking about the Illinois basketball team. Repping small town Washington, Illinois, senior co-host J.J. Wilson. Last but not least, the senior producer from Chicago, Illinois, Torrance Sorrell. The, the, the season finale, I said on, on Twitter, of Line I Drive is our, our last episode. We've got, we did some hiring, some new guys coming in next year. We're real excited about that. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, today, Torrance, I'm feeling a little nostalgic. Yeah, man. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see uh, the talent next year, man. You know, it's, it's been a fun ride. You know, I don't want to get too sentimental yet because we could save that for the last segment. But it would have been nice to have the whole, the whole family, the whole family. Here for the last episode. But, uh. We're actually going to get into family. I was going to say, it's interesting you <laughs> mentioned that. Uh, our One of our guys that we talk about probably more than anyone on the show, Tim Beckman, and uh, his <laughs> mantra of family was called into question yesterday. Yeah. So let's get right into it. The big news around, around campus here, uh, senior offensive lineman Simon Sianovich kind of ripped Beckman, Mike Thomas, the Illinois football program, in a scathing series of tweets yesterday, basically alleging that you know, the, the team forced him back from injuries and that shoulder and knee injuries kind of cost him a shot potentially at the NFL. In regard, in other uh, allegations, just said there was a toxic culture where Beckman, uh, you know, pushed him too far for, for injuries. And and it even goes with his little brother, Peter, uh, who's a medical redshirt last year, lost allegedly lost 40 pounds because of misdiagnosed diabetes. You can read articles on the Daily Illinois website. We've we've been covering this yesterday and today. Mike Thomas had a press conference, uh, teleconference today. Basically, gave Beckman his his voice of support. Um, said he had, thinks he believes that Beckman had the players' interests at heart, but there will be a review of the allegations with interviews and etc. Coming uh, forthcoming in the near future. So, Torrance, I guess when you saw this coming out and kind of the, the media firestorm is created, I guess, what's your initial thoughts when you when you see all this? That is definitely unlike Beckman's character. You yeah. know, uh, like you said, it's something that um, he talks so much about, just this whole family culture, and then you see this. I mean, and then, like you said, the rant, that's that's the main thing that, that had me. I'm like, that's something that you don't wake up and see every day. Like, um, you know, I mean, I know we don't talk a lot about being a student on the show, but I actually heard this from one of my friends, mm-hmm. one of my senior friends. He just told me, um, hey, just um, have you went online, just go on Twitter and uh, look at this about line football. I'm like, line football is over. Spring game is over. Right. So, like, yeah. what the heck is going on? Then I just see these series of tweets, and I was like, man, that's that's crazy. I mean, it's, you know, you have you have Beckman. You just, it's just two completely different sides. And, you know, we always see – Beckman, you know, the all happy, smiley type person, personality is, you know, we had that, well, you guys had that interview with him several weeks ago, and then you just see this, this, like, dark side, it's like, do we really have this hidden side behind closed doors that the media don't know about? Yeah, I don't know, like, when we did the interview, and every time I've talked to him, I've always felt, just judging his character, that he was very genuine yeah. when he said these things that... You know, it, it's a family, and we care about the athletes. We want to get our guys their degree, and you know, it's more about than just being football players. He always seemed genuine, in my opinion. Right. Um, now, some of the allegations that Simon Sianovich brought up, you know, basically berating him verbally at practice, um, among, you know, forcing him quickly back from injuries. I'm gonna go say I think I think that sort of stuff happens at most major programs. If you're if you're at this competitive level, high major D1 ball, that's how it's going to be. I mean, Torrance, do you play football ever, high school? Just basketball. Just basketball. Oh, okay. I'm too tiny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, I mean, crushed. like you, okay, my only experience from high school, but that, for better or for worse, this, what Simon described, I'm going to keep calling by his first name because his last name, I know I'm going to trip over a thousand times. He's doing pretty good at first. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, better than me. So, I mean, you, the better or worse, this is sort of football culture, I think, in America. I think, you, you know, you go around to practice, you know, 
the coaches will be downright abrasive. Yeah. I mean, they, they will berate players. It's a violent sport. I mean, we've seen all the concussion issues. I mean, I, the, the injuries are, are gruesome and they're, they're severe, but you know, that's the risk of playing ball. Right. Right. Now, when you say you want to be rushed back from injury, of course, you know, I'm not trying to condone anyone or take anyone's sides, but you know, of course you want a four year starter back on the field. You know, of course you do. Uh, now, only only Simon knows if he was truly healthy or not, and right. he claims that he wasn't. Sat out the last couple games, didn't play in the bowl game, says he wasn't invited, invited to the bowl, bowl game. game yeah. Wasn't the invited to the senior either. banquet. Wow. So, I mean, this this stuff all runs pretty deep, and I'm, I'm not sure we'll ever know w- one side or the other, right. whether it was true, just because it's so much of he said, she said. Yeah. You know, I mean... I, I don't know. You can investigate all you want. And there was kind of differing opinions on Twitter. You know, I saw Pete Bonhoom, former walk-on wide receiver, mm-hmm. agreeing, saying, you know, I could write a book about everything that happened at Illinois. You know, I saw a uh, former player at Toledo from Beckman tweeted at Simon and just said, hey, I'm glad you're standing up for this. It was the, he was the same way. But then you got a lot of guys. You got Teddy Karras, you know, who's right next to the line. And Simon, uh, at right guard right there, he went through an ACL injury of his own. Right. He said, Simon quit on our team when we needed him the most. Wow. Okay. And, you know, you got Jihad Ward had a few tweets. He had later deleted, but he was on Beckman's side. So just to see the divide like this, I, I don't know if we'll ever know all of the truth about it, but I'm not sure it matters. You also but- have um, just like parents signing too. I know I've seen um, Lynn Dudex, she's signing a little bit with Beckman's side. So you also see parents taking a stance on it too so it'll be interesting to see you know more of them you know getting involved and kind of having this little divide in line because obviously the parents care because that's their kids going out there risking their lives playing for these programs so you know man it's it's definitely a sticky situation and what crazier way than for it to be like towards the end of the year for this to happen yeah i mean normally this is kind of a down period you know, you you don't even think about football until summer practices right. open up. But now this blows out, and I, I want to talk a little bit about um, you know Beckman as a coach. Now, I mean, for we're, we're in year th- four, going into year four, we're through three years, and the on the field product has left a lot of people wanting more. Yeah. I mean, even last year he made the bowl game. It, a lot of people still were not satisfied with a lot lot of the games that they played. You know, they're not up to certain standard. So I think a lot of people are very frustrated with the football aspect, but the thing he's always been able to hang his hat on is the off the field. They don't have discipline problems. They keep setting the GPA record, the GPA he over three. At 3.14. He lo- yeah, he loves, talk- <laughs> he loves talking about it so much. Torrance memorized it. Okay. So, I mean, he talks about that. You know, they stay out of trouble with the law and, you know, they have a great team culture. And that's where you know, his supporters can stand the most. It's like, okay, you need time to build the program, but he's doing everything else the right way. Right. You know, he's, he doesn't have all of these off the field stuff. He's not kind of, you know, shady back alley kind of deals that, you know, some other programs might have. So, but now with all these allegations coming out, you wonder, you know, is that actually true? If he, it, does he even have that? You know, and and that's when you seriously start raising questions about, you know, Tim Beckman's job security. Yeah, now, I mean, every year, like I know Sam Sherman always talk about this as far as him progressing this year. But now every year that he's been here, he's somewhat, you know, progressed. Obviously, yeah. you know, they, they made a bowl game yeah. this year. But you can't help but to think, like, will his, I mean, he don't really have a legacy. But how much will this big story affect going into next season? That's really what I'm most afraid of. Is it going to be a lot of underground stuff going on that could kind of hinder the team and you know they had their best you know recruiting class since he's been here so it's just interesting to see obviously um from a recruiting standpoint too players wanted to come here for the upcoming years like they hear something like this nobody don't want to go to the school and they pretty much treating players like that yeah so it makes you wonder in that aspect as well yeah i mean you know mike thomas said there'd be an investigation you know see whatever he finds but just with something like this, just gut feeling, I, I feel like Beckman won't be the coach week one in the fall. Yeah. I mean, I, it's just whether it's they they find that these allegations are true. If so, I think I think Beckman goes. I think Mike Thomas goes because that's how it works. Up the chain of command, you're mm-hmm. responsible for who's under you. He hired Tim Beckman. This stuff went on. And the football program wasn't great. In addition to all this, I think Thomas goes. Um, but even even regardless, maybe it's a situation where 
you know what? Mike Thomas decides to just cut away from Tim Beckman and just try to save his own job. Right. You know, cut cut away from from this whole thing, distance yourself from it, and and try and just start anew. I, I don't know. I mean, only time will tell. But right now, this is the last thing that Tim Beckman needed for this program because, uh, like, and genuinely, they were on the right track. Yeah. I mean, you know, two to four to six wins, the best recruiting class in their uh, in Beckman's era so far. Um, it's you know, it's it's like the signing day thing all over again. Remember, I, I mean, they had the best recruiting class under Beckman. They got to, I think it was seventh in the Big Ten, mm-hmm. which is pretty good. Like for Illinois standards, that's pretty yeah. good. You're beating <laughs> out, you know, some of these be- bigger and and perennially better schools. But then Beckman goes on his on his soapbox and says he need, he wants help from the media, <laughs> and that's all that everyone ever talks that was about. Crazy. So. I don't know. It just seems like Beckman can't get out of his own way right now. We'll see what comes of it, but right now it's certainly not looking good for him. Yeah, just keep continually to make one step forward and two steps back. That's something you know he always been doing. But I'm really interested to see how the how the investigation process is really going to work. Like sure. how they're going to start it off. Like it just it just so many things to to kind of look for. I don't know if they're going to. Start with the players first, the parents. It's just so many different perspectives, and it's like, how they really going to just get this evidence? I mean, I'm not, I'm no detective myself, but it's just mm-hmm. interesting to see, you know, the process, how they're going to start conducting this stuff with just so many different sides, and really just, you know, just trying to see who's who's getting out of it and who's not. That's that's what I'm interested in. Well, and think if you're. You know, it's easy to talk if you're a guy um, who doesn't have any eligibility left. You know, Jack Cornell, uh, former offensive lineman, Baltimore Ravens now, or formerly, I'm not sure if he's still on there, uh, was kind of getting into it with Sianovich on Twitter. But say, you know, you're you're a redshirt freshman and, you know, your playing time is, you know, spotty. You know, you want to continue and, and get some more playing time. Mm-hmm. Are you really going to risk that by, you know, maybe telling the truth, maybe not, you know, depending on if it is true, but are you really going to blast you know, the guy that has control over your playing time. And I think that's what one of the main points that Sianovich was making here is no one's going to stand up against the coach because if you're not, this is a verbatim kind of tweet he used, if you stand up against Beckman or against the program, then you're not a team player or you're, or you're soft. And they're the ones controlling your scholarships and they're the ones controlling your playing time. So it's hard. I mean, I, I agree. Yeah, the investigation process, I think it's going to be hard to get straight answers out of anybody because, you know, you don't want to say something that's going to, you know, mess with your, your opportunities on the field. Yeah. And uh, and I don't know. It's it's a, it's a mess here. I'm, I'm just looking at some of these tweets. I'll just read some of them out. Yeah. Uh, that's Sianovich, if I said it right. Yeah. <laughs> I tweeted out. He was just saying uh, just a couple things he tweeted. Uh, this was one that he tweeted a half hour ago. It's funny how Beckman says I quit the team when he called me after saying I'll always be a part of his family. And he wants to have me around. Other tweets, yeah, you call it treating us like employees. I call it giving us a voice. Mike Thomas never asked me for an exit interview. So, man, it's, <laughs> this is some crazy stuff, man. I mean, it's been going on now for, for two full days. And now it's gotten to the point where Sianovich is, is responding to people on Twitter yeah. and, and kind of taking on them. Um, so... I, I I don't know. I'm I don't envy Mike Thomas's position because it seems like no matter what you do, there's there's no way out. Yeah. And he he took a I guess a, a slightly defensive stance towards Beckman today, um, but still hardly a vote of confidence. I would say if you listen to his to his press conference. Um, and again, we you know we need more information. This is the story is 24 hours old. Right. Um, so we'll keep investigating. You know, and, and eventually, hopefully, that the the truth will come out. But mm-hmm. hopefully, uh, <laughs> just looking at this too, just I wonder what actually made them started to do the the rants. That's what's yeah, pretty well, curious. About. Why now? I mean, maybe. Uh, I mean, you know, if you're if you're a cynic, you could say, you know, he's a senior. He's done with finals. He now the university owes him nothing because they can't revoke his scholarship. Right. If that's what you fear as a player then, yeah, I guess wait until you're done. You know, wait until your scholarship is gone and you're you're used up, then then you can step forward. But, I mean, from reading his tweets, the, the theme is that he, uh, I mean, I think he went a little bit too far sometimes. I mean, he said 
Beckman was the Kim Jong Un of uh, football coaches, oh, which wow. is the North Korean dictator. So <laughs> he went uh, that far. That, that's maybe <laughs> taking a step too far. Uh, maybe not. I that's don't know. Pretty, yeah, that's that's pretty crazy. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Maybe it's just it's hard for me to believe that that Tim Beckman is. I mean, we we know him. He's a he's a jolly guy, but it's just so hard for me to believe that he's so we would be so two faced, you right. know, and and uh, be able to I don't know, berate players like this. And again, I, I think it goes back to to football culture. So you know, it's where you know coaches want the most out of their players, and yeah, it's a violent sport with a lot of aggression. And you know, some guys are tough guys, and they. They buy into that. They feed off that. I think of Teddy Karras. You know, he, they buy into that, and that's how they get motivated to play. But other guys, that doesn't work, and that can cause a lot of, as you mentioned, a lot of mental health problems and a lot of physical health problems if you're being rushed back too soon. Right, and then, you know, you have these this big issue with the helmets, too, just with concussions, too. So, yeah. it's just so many things going on with injuries and... Man, just I'm so interested to see this this story develop. Uh, me personally, I want to see if uh, there are going to be some changes, and I want to see if um, if anything's personally going to happen to to Simon as well. Because like you said, it's it's a lot of people just saying, "Oh man, he's soft too." So yeah. I mean, you you want to think how long has this been going on? And because you mentioned there was some players from Toledo who even said stuff about sure. Beckman. So <laughs> this could have been a problem that happened for just a. a, a a huge period of time, I mean, five years, maybe even a, a decade span. And it's just crazy how people are now just starting to say something about it. It's like there, there's a lot of potential dominoes to fall here. I mean, Mike Thomas is obviously the biggest one, then Tim Beckman. But even under that, I mean, he mentioned Tom Bratton, offensive line coach, um, Bill Cubitt, offensive coordinator. And then he goes into talking about some of the support staff with strength coaches, team doctors, physicians. I mean, there's a lot of people who's their backsides on the line here, depending on what they find. And and so, I mean, this is a huge story. I'm sure it will loom over the Illinois program for too much of a time. But, I mean, it's already gone viral. I mean, Simon uh, Sianovich was with Doug Gottlieb today. Jay Billis wrote a story about it. It was on the front page of ESPN. I mean, there's just no hiding this story right <laughs> Every now. time Illini football is on the front page of something, <laughs> it's, it's never good. <laughs> it's not good. It's always something. Yeah, I... I don't know, man. So I mean, I I think I think we'll see, but I I don't expect anything to any major decisions to be made soon. I mean, they're going to take their time on this. And also, it was interesting to me that I'm not sure when Beckman's press conference is going to be, but he's going to have yeah. to have one Got to. sooner rather than later. And with his record of saying things, maybe wall, so. maybe that he doesn't mean. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I'm sure the the Illinois program might be cringing a little bit to see when he's responding to some really, really tough questions that he's end up gonna, gonna, going to end up getting. I wonder how many people are going to be at that interview of that because it's gaining so much national attention now. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's already it's already national. It's already blown up. And so, but again, I mean, I, it's, it's just so surprising to me that it's Illinois because, like, I could. It makes sense if it's for me. If it's Alabama, you know, Nick Saban. Everyone knows his his persona is kind of a tyrant, and that they're so physically gifted and, and imposing. And there's so much pressure, but it's it's Illinois. I mean, they're they're perennially a bottom third team in the Big Ten. Yeah. So this is going on here. I mean, you know, what's going on at other places? Yeah, I will only imagine that too. And not even just other places too. I mean, you can only imagine if it, if, if this is going on in other sports as well that people being real quiet about obviously football is one of the like you said violent sports but i mean this can happen almost anywhere i mean it's just sure. a lot of crazy coaches everywhere that you know put a smile on their face and then you know after that they just do some crazy <laughs> stuff when the, when the doors are closed so. all right what was it uh well i i, I want to say rutgers coach but i don't want to i don't get it wrong that was they, they had caught the footage of him at practice he was throwing the balls at his players and, and stuff like this is, <laughs> this is a couple years ago i'm butchering the reference but yeah, I mean, it's it's certainly not isolated to football, and it's tough. As Beckman always says, it's 18 to 22-year-old kids you're dealing with, and so it's not their job. They don't get paid for it. I mean, they get compensated in terms of a scholarship, but, I mean, outside of that, it's, I mean, it's a game. Yeah. And the fact that it's pushed to this limit because of there's so much money involved and there's so much pressure, I think it's just sad for me. But, all right, we're going to go ahead and take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to have... 
the Illini baseball starting ace Kevin Duchesne in studio talking about the Illini's 24-game winning streak. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back here on Illini Drive. Just a quick commercial break. That's how Torrance and I do it. Less commercials, more talking, because we'd love to hear our own voices. Coming up here, we were talking about the Illini baseball team, and if you've been under a rock for the past month and a half, they've been on a tear recently. They've won 24 games in a row now after sweeping Rutgers over the weekend. They are up to number two in one polls, and baseball has probably about six or seven different polls. So depending on where you look at, they're, they're number two, between number two and ten, but certainly one of the elite teams in the conference. They're, they're leading the Big Ten Conference, one of the elite teams in the country, Potentially looking to make a push for Omaha in the College World Series. They had a pretty solid weekend, sweeping Rutgers in a doubleheader on Saturday and then winning in an absolute slugfest, 28-13 against the Scarlet Knights set, or Sunday at Illinois Field. The team has one more series against Nebraska at home this season before conference tournament and national tournaments to follow. So... And right now, just walked into studio as I'm speaking. We're joined. Yeah, just right there is fine. Uh, we're joined by Illinois ace Kevin Duchesne. Kevin, what's up? Oh, not much, man. How you doing? Pretty good, pretty good. Uh, can't complain on this this finals week. There's, as you can see, there's there's no one here, so it's pretty low key today. <laughs> uh, so let's talk about 24 wins in a row. We had you in here a couple weeks ago. The streak I think was only you know 15 or so then, but 24 now. I mean. How long can you keep this guy, this thing going? Uh, well, I mean, it would be nice to win all the way through Omaha. Sure. Yeah, no, I, the team expects to to win, so uh, I'd say we're a very confident group. The the win streak, you know, everybody's been asking, is there a lot of pressure, you know, this and that. Not really, man. You know, mm -hmm. we believe in our abilities. We go out there, we, we strap it on every single day, and, uh, you know, we give every team what we got. And so far, so good. Yeah, I mean, moving up to, I saw there's like what six or seven different polls uh, for for Division One baseball, but one of them you guys are up to number two, and so I mean, regardless, that's not the goal, but that's got to be like a little bit exciting moving up that far in the polls, right? Absolutely, man. Uh, so, like you said, there's six polls, and there's not really a definitive poll. Okay. Um, you know, I, right now we're a consensus top five, which is very good. You know, mm -hmm. all, all all five or six publications that are, you know, kind of viable have us right right in the mix. They're you know one or two games away or one or two losses away. You know, somebody in front of us as long as we keep winning to being in that number one spot. Um, you know, it, it's it's very nice getting the you know the pub that that we believe that we deserve. However, you know these rankings don't really mean anything yeah. until the national seeds come out and, and seeing where we're at come NCAA tournament time. Right. I mean, uh, so I'm I'm just gonna say so you guys have the Big Ten tournament and then the national seedings will come out after that. I assume the following. What would that be? The following Monday, I think, is Selection Monday. Okay. And then, so there's a the potential to host your pool here in Champaign? There is a very yeah. legitimate chance that we will bring a regional, and then if we get the national seat, it would be a super regional as well. Okay. It's like having home field throughout the playoffs to Champaign-Urbana. Okay. I mean, that's got to be a goal for you guys, right? Oh, I mean, that's a, that's a goal for, for everybody. You know, yeah. the, the easiest way to Omaha would be playing in front of all these, you know, fantastic fans that are coming out and supporting us. It, it's, it's one of those things that, you know, was kind of surreal, at, at the beginning when we started, you know, being put into the consideration, but now it's just kind of the standard that we're, we're trying to live by. Mm -hmm. I was at uh, one of the games Saturday. I announced second game uh, for you guys, but I mean, even on kind of a, you know, rainy day, I mean, you guys had packed house again. I mean, that's that's got to be great. I mean, for a sport that you know, we make the joke a couple times with you guys that Illinois is kind of a baseball school now, but I mean the fans have really been showing up for you guys, and would you would assume would do so uh, going into the NCAA tournament? Uh, I, I mean, I would hope so. Yeah. We, we've been uh, we've been doing fairly well for ourselves, and, and fairly well, twenty four in a row. That's yeah. the most modest I think I've heard a twenty four game win streak. But uh, no, <laughs> like like I said, we're just out there. We're having fun every single day. Uh, 
Like, I, I mean, I, I've said this before. It's like, you know, everybody's saying, you know, what's it like? Well, it's just like going out and hanging out with your 35 best friends for three or four hours a day. Yeah. I, I know you guys keep it pretty loose in the in the locker room. I guess who's who's some of the biggest jokesters you got? In, oh, Malazzo. Malazzo. Malazzo, hands down. Yeah, yeah. The guy is uh, he's a nut. Um, <laughs> you know, you you never really know what's going to come out of his mouth, mm-hmm. and um, you never really know what he is or is not joking about because some <laughs> some of the stuff is very questionable. <laughs> well, we we had him in here uh, early in the season. He, him and uh, Chucky Naso. They were, they, were, they were great, funny guys. And, you know, I saw on, on one of your BTN games, Malazzo was photobombing Hartlib during the interview, uh, sideline interview. I mean, is that stuff just kind of on, on the normal, just all, all the time, just joking around? Or? Oh, yeah, man. I mean, especially when you're on national TV and you, you want to get some, some face time on TV, oh, yeah. there's there's absolutely no better opportunity that you're going to get than, than uh, photobombing Coach Hartlib. <laughs> absolutely. So uh, this past weekend... Yeah, let's see. I came to keep my taste. Yesterday, you guys won by a football score, twenty-eight to thirteen. Yeah, was, real shootout. <laughs> yeah, crazy. I was at that game too. Um, I was gonna ask you about that because um, you know, that was the first time you guys had so many runs since two thousand. So obviously, uh, you know, that was before your time here. I, just what was going on? Was every was it just like a, a basketball you guys were hitting? You guys were just slugging everywhere, from what I say. It wasn't a good day to be a pitcher. I'll tell you. <laughs> No, uh, you know you had you had a kind of a dead wind. Uh, there there was not there was nothing really there, and then all of a sudden it would be howling out to left. Then it'd be dead. I, I don't know. I, I just felt like one. Thank God our hitters showed up because you know uh, we could have been a little bit better on the mound. But the, those guys obviously putting up all those runs. You know, it, at least at least that gives you a little bit of closure as a pitcher to know that hey, even if I'm not having my best day, you know, which. Uh, which neither side was. Uh, sure. Yeah, you know, it must have. It must have been just a, a an absolutely fantastic day seeing the ball. And it, I was, mean. Uh, it was nine. I think it was nine runs um, a piece too. From uh, that was like around when I first got there, and you know, and then that just happened. Did something change in the dugout? Like, uh, what, what was going through you guys' heads? That just obviously after that, you guys just exploded after that. You know, uh, truthfully, I think that everybody was keeping the same approach, uh, attacking fastballs early. Um, you know, we, we were fortunate to, um, to get some pitches and some favorable counts and, uh, and, and just do the most of it. I, I wouldn't say that. I would say that our mentality from an offensive standpoint is always, you know, to, to go out there and, and hunt the fastball. And for, like I said, fortunately for us, today was just one of the, or yesterday, sorry, it was one of those days where the, the ball is just finding the barrel. Yeah. So I, you know, you pitch probably once a weekend. You know, I guess on those days, I'm always curious. On those days when you're not throwing, what do you, what are you doing during the game? I'm ch- I'm charting pitches. Okay. So our our pitching coach has me standing right next to him. So we're charting, um, you know, what we threw somebody in innings before, just to kind of see, you know, how we want to attack, uh, you know, individual hitters, what has been working in that day and what hasn't, because. A lot of what you see is in the big leagues is hitters are able to make pitch by pitch adjustments um, to, you know, breaking balls or change ups or good fastballs. So you don't really see that as much at the college level. If, if yeah. something's good on one day, chances are you're going to probably be able to get them get again on the on the same type of deal. Uh, so that's why we do that. Yeah. Okay. It's not just sitting around, you know, eating seeds and and relaxing not the whole time. <laughs> uh, I mean, it, no, it's, it's not. It's not as laid back as that. But it's surely not the same workload that uh, the other players, you know, the everyday players and the bullpen guys have to endure. Sure. So you guys top of the Big Ten standings. Magic number is two to clinch the conference. You know, Iowa is number two, and you guys didn't play them this year. What's your thoughts on that? Do you wish you guys got a chance at them? or? Oh, yeah. I mean, absolutely. We wish that we could settle this, you know, kind of... Head-to-head. Uh, yeah, head-to-head and yeah. and, 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 uh, and a winner-takes-all series. But, you know, that's just how the scheduling works with the Big Ten. You're not going to be able to play everybody. And unfor- unfortunately for both of us, because I'm sure they, you know, they're, they're thinking the same thing, we'd yeah. like to be able to go over there or have them come here and show them what, you know, why we think we're the best. But... 
you know, it's, it's just one of those things where we kind of control our own destiny right now. We're not really worried about, you know, what Iowa's doing. Obviously, it'd be nice if they would lose once in a while, but um, no, it, it's... It, it's it would 100% be really, really, really nice if we would have played them to give us a little bit of breathing room. But at the same time, like I said, man, it's a, two two more games. We just got to strap it in. We got a big weekend coming up against Nebraska. Everybody's yeah. getting pumped up for it. So, uh, you know, everybody wants the hardware. Yeah, absolutely. If you guys win the Big Ten, do you guys get rings? Um, you know, I'm not. I'm not quite sure. Uh, I, with all of that, I do okay. know that. Um, it, it, that's. I, I've never been in the position before, yeah. like where where we have one. So, you know, and I don't. In recent memory, I can't remember the last team that at Illinois that won the Big Ten uh, regular season. Okay. So when they won the tournament, I believe they got rings in eleven. Mm -hmm. So I would imagine probably, but at the same time, we got bigger rings that we want to get. Yeah, you know, right. that, that that regional, that super regional, and then ultimately, you know, that 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 natty ring. Yeah, I mean, now you know, as as the streak has gone on, I mean, you look just at, at national guys. I mean, I don't know how much you guys read this stuff, but it it's like almost. It seemed like reading it, everyone was kind of waiting for you guys to like, all right, like when's this going to end? You know, like when's you know the you know the team from up north, the Big Ten, going to kind of drop off a little bit? And you guys haven't. I mean, you've been just plugging away this whole time. I mean, do you feel like you guys had something to prove just coming not being in the SEC or not in the ACC or you know one of these coast conferences that have four seasons of baseball? You know, outside all the time. I'm not sure that we have anything to prove to them or, or anybody else, but just to prove to ourselves that we are as good as we think we are. Yeah. You know, we, we knew coming into this year that, that we were going to have a very good team as long as everybody, you know, played their role and did their job. And, and I think that it's nice being able to have people from the South reading about Illinois and saying, you know, those guys, they can play, you know, they can play a good brand of baseball. But at the yeah. same time, it's like, you know, we expect to go out there and win. We yeah. we really do. We feel as if there isn't anybody better than us. Um, and this has been a mindset for a long time. And 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 you know, a lot of people could call that you know overly confident or cocky. But at the same time, it, it's what it comes down to is, yeah, we're not we're not LSU or or you know Alabama in football. You know, we historically we're not. Um, that team. However, we believe that we that this program is 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 worth a lot more than what people give it credit for, and we're out here, you know, to to prove that. Well, I feel like especially if you're from a program that's not necessarily you know parentally you know getting those national championship rings, like you you have to play with a chip on your shoulder. You know, you got to play you know borderline cocky just because you know you you, know, you guys necessarily haven't been there before. But once you get there, you got to show that. You know, you're staying around for a while. Um, so finals week this week for you. What's what's the schedule looking like? You you got you done with stuff or nine, like? nine a.m. tomorrow morning and then okay. I'm done. Okay, I'm so jealous. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's that's pretty nice. And you don't have anything to do for other than just win a series against Nebraska. Yeah, and then uh, you know just the focus becomes you know what the focus has been obviously. You know, a student athlete, we're, we're, we have to take care of everything off the field to be on the field. However, you know, f from the very beginning, our, our always everybody, every baseball team's goal is Omaha. Yeah. So that's going to be, that's going to be, we, we have our eye on the prize and that's going to be the number one priority for everybody. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's so last series against Nebraska, then it's Big Ten, then it's, then it's the regional, hopefully here. Yeah, and then and on to Omaha. So stay tuned if you're watching Line Eye Baseball. Who knows? Maybe we'll get to 27 this week. So it's Kevin Duchesne, thanks for coming on, man. Thanks, guys. Yeah, we'll be right back after a quick break. Hey, this is Matt Spiegel from 670 The Score. You're listening to a Line Eye Drive on WPGU 107.1 Mondays at six. Dunleavy looking finds Rose. Rose trying to get open, fires away. against Bazemore. Here comes Pierce with five seconds left. Pierce with three. Pierce with two. Pierce fall away at the horn. It's gone! Paul Pierce does it again as the Wizards win it! 103-101! 1.5 remaining. James for the win! It's gone! LeBron James at the buzzer! I wanted to
tell you this because I'm going to brag a little bit. I got to be a dad. No, really. I lost about 1,200 listeners on the way. 1,200 listeners? <laughs> in my book. I guarded Jabari Parker for three possessions. He scored seven points. <laughs> <laughs> no shade. Oh, man. We'll see. You know, uh, I, I'm not playing. I'm coaching in the, in the tournament. We're fans of no one here at the Illini, uh, on Illini Drive. Steve Bourbon. Wait. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> I know it might be a corny word, but love is out there. It's been a long day without you, my friend. And I'll tell you all about it when Torrance, I, 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 I thought I told you to delete that thing when I when I forgot my name. What 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 the hell? It's the last episode, man. I had to keep that in archives somewhere. Well, Torrance, we're, we're we're a little full circle here. You and I came in together sophomore or uh, freshman year, came in together, same recruiting class, and. Now we're closing out here on Illini Drive. Can we see tears today from you or what? I don't know, man. I'm too, too small for that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, got, you got the stone face like D Rose after you get that game winner. That's what you're going to talk about actually right now. So. Yeah, we still got Kevin Duchesne in the studio. We couldn't let him go. He had some strong opinions on, on the NBA playoffs. And Torrance, you know, you and I love to talk about the NBA playoffs. Sure. And, you know, the first series, the Bulls series. I mean, I think I'm I'm biased because I, I love my Bulls, but this has been the most entertaining second-round series for me. And back-to-back games, D-Rose spanks in a three to win it, and then LeBron answers right back with the buzzer beater. So what do you, we're, we're all square, 2-2, two, two, best of three. I mean, what, do you, what are you thinking here? That was a stinger, man. Um, that one hurt, like, that, in yeah. here. Like, it yeah. Just because the fact that, you know, you look at that now in the next – Two out of three games is going to be in Cleveland. And you know how it is, just LeBron, you know. It's, it's the king. Matter. Yeah. The best. <laughs> oh, <laughs> boy, God. You see, I was, I like the Miami Heat when he was on the team because I'm a Dwayne Wade fan, but now uh. he's off the team. So now I'm like, okay, my Bulls, is, 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 is starting to, it's starting to come back to him. I'm starting to bleed red a little bit more. So, but that game, man, just from a, even if you're not a fan of both teams, that's some good basketball being played. And, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I really didn't want to see a sweep. From the, I mean, obviously, you know, Bulls fans probably won't see a sweep, but it's just LeBron is not going to get swept. Well, I mean, you knew LeBron was going to have a game. I mean, like, I hate to say it, but, like, you know, I think he's got one more game. Yeah, he's, got a, he's got a mean triple-double coming in one of the next three games. Hey, I mean, so. he, he brings it every single night, guys. Like, what? He, he averages well over 20 points a game. And, 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 what, he had that ridiculous streak going of 25 points or more in a game halfway yeah. through the season. Yeah. Uh, you know, when it, what it comes down to is when's the last time the Bulls – went and beat any team in the Eastern Conference Finals that LeBron was on. You know, yeah. I feel like, like we could take this back a couple of years. He he just has their number. I mean, I am a LeBron fan. I'm not a Cavs fan. I, I you know, I do like Chicago. Um, what, what I will say is, is that you got to you gotta take him out of the game somehow or else, you know, if it's close in those last two minutes, man, he's going to find a way to take over. Well, that's the thing. It's like on that last shot, like Butler defended him like very well. Great defense. But yeah. like he just drills it. I mean, he's the, you know, as much as he had the quote unquote down year this year, I mean, he's still the best player in the game. Yeah. And, and it's funny because, uh, you know, going off that, he didn't used to be clutch. That's something that he always lacked, just that mentality of taking over games. He was always a superb talent. But he never had that mentality that those old superstars, like obviously Jordan and, and Kobe had. And that's why they used to have a leg up over him because they had that killer instinct. And now LeBron has developed this clutch into his game. So that only adds on to his legacy. Well, I mean, they, they need him because Kyrie's been horrible. Yeah. I mean, he's but he's I he's agree. injured right now. I mean, he, he, he still played what was it, 40 minutes. But, I mean, he's he's been ineffective. And I think the Bulls got to take advantage of that somehow. But. Well, I mean, the, the Bulls, it's been their M.O. You know, they had a little bit of a down year uh, towards the middle there with their defense. But, you know, you know that Tibbs' team is going to show up and play defense in the playoffs. And that, you know, that right there, you know, keeping Kyrie off the board, one of the best pure scorers in the game, that is that is a true testament to, to how well coached this Bulls team is. Well, I'm, I'm just so shocked that Tibbs has been as flexible as he has with the lineups. I mean, normally it's, you know, Powell's, well, Powell's been injured. So he was, he's question, was he questionable for game five, yeah. that hamstring? Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, it's, he has his things where Jimmy Butler's going to play 44, Derek's going to play 40, you know, Powell's not going to play in, like, the fourth quarter. And, you know, he's very regimented. But we saw in game three he came out with that small ball lineup of Rose, Heinrich, Dunleavy, Butler, and then Taj. Yeah. 
And that lineup was actually able to kind of match Cleveland a little bit. I mean, it's been back and forth, but I don't think Cleveland really expected Chicago to go down to their level and play small like they have. Yeah, that's something that's actually been uh, working for him. I mean, just playing that transition because, you know, Cleveland has, they have a lot of lanky players on that team. When I yeah. think about, like, uh, Tristan Thompson, mm-hmm. his game is oh. obviously elevated uh, with the help of LeBron. I think just LeBron being back on that team, you've never seen a Tristan Thompson play like that before. Um, you know, you have uh, Mozgov. It was one play, Mozgov, uh, he's just Mozgov, just got so hyped. <laughs> that's, I know Bulls fans are just... Uh, just hated that, but I mean, those are big bodies that you needed to step up when uh, Verja was out. So now, you know, LeBron has that. I stand by that Thompson only plays well when he's playing the Bulls. It seems like every time he plays the Bulls, he's getting 15 rebounds and like two points or something like that. But he's a monster on the glass. I can I can promise you I had Tristan Thompson on my fantasy team this okay. year. That is that is not a fluke. No, <laughs> that guy is good for five offensive boards a game. I mean, it, drawing fouls down on the offensive glass, it, it's it's unbelievable. The you know just the whole. Uh, the whole complexion that he brings to to the game by being such a scrappy player, like he said, like he's not gonna he's not gonna put up a, a ton of points, but at the same time he's gonna get his and his time, and it, it, it that they need to find an answer for for the three ball. Uh, what was that game three where Jr. had yeah. what he threw down like three in the in the fourth quarter or something? Yeah. They they need to find a way to to stop those runs um, in, in order to win. But you know at the at the same time, uh, you know I feel like with the rotations that Tibbs is throwing out there, he's keeping. I mean you know relatively fresh guards out on the floor. You can bring in Tony Snell, who, you know, I'm not a big fan of, but at the same time, he's lanky. He can match up with, uh, you know, the Iman Shumpert or the J.R. Smith. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you have to make Shumpert or J.R. Smith or Della Dova or James Jones, whoever it is, you got to make them dribble. Yeah. Because, I mean, they're they're not known slashers. I mean, Shumpert and Smith, like, yeah, yeah, like a little bit, but like Della Dova, if he puts the ball on the floor, that's a win. Like he, I mean, yeah, James Jones, he hasn't so dribbled since 2012. Like, yeah. I, I don't even know. Well, he's there for a reason. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he sits there, shoots threes, and he's LeBron's friend. So, well, I mean, yeah. well, there you go. You know, <laughs> when you when you have to double team somebody because he is so big getting to the basket, there's always going to be somebody open. And the problem is, is that his LeBron's court vision is so good that yeah. he, he has an easy time finding these guys. So, you know, I like I said, I give the Bulls a lot of credit because truthfully coming into this series, even with K-Love down, I told, I told all my friends that this was going to be the Cavs in six, and that was like me being dead honest. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 you hit it on the head earlier. I mean, they just haven't beaten LeBron in the playoffs. I mean, even going back to, you know, 2011, they got him in the conference finals. Then they've had, you know, a depleted team that faced Miami. They got the, the Nate Robinson game took one, but other than that, they weren't going <laughs> to. Yeah, yeah. Me too. <laughs> you know, it's clear. Where, you know, the, the, the Bulls, you know, reserve point guard rejuvenator. I mean, it was Aaron Brooks this year, but he's been a complete non-factor this entire series. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so hard to to just throw guys out there just playing against uh, LeBron and, and Kyrie. Even when Kyrie is injured, I mean, he's been better than you know a reserve guard, of course. But I don't know, man. I just feel like uh, the X factor. I really believe the X factor for the Bulls is Joe Kim Noah. Sure. Yeah. I, think, I really think it's Noah. Yeah. If Noah turns up his play then everyone else is going to follow suit. And for the Cavs, I feel like their X factor is Kyrie. Because, you know, you always hear, hear this about him not having playoff experience. But besides that injury, he's been playing exceptionally well. And, you know, he was the guy, quote-unquote, on the team before LeBron even got there. So, it just, I feel like those two guys is going to – I mean, everyone else is kind of going to do their job. But if those two guys kind of elevate their game a little bit, whoever wins – I mean, obviously it's two different positions. But whoever has a better game between those two is going to determine the series. I honestly feel that. I, and I – you know, stemming off that, I truthfully feel like, you know, and you hit on it earlier, that – Pau Gasol is such a that's that's such a major piece to this team. Yeah. You know, being able to throw two very 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 quality big men at at, at a team where you know Tristan Thompson and Timofey Ma- Mozgov, like yeah. you know you got Pau Gasol who's a you know an, an all star, and then you got Joe Kim Noah who is you know my actually one of my favorite players in the league because he he works so hard. Yeah. 
I mean, Joe, he's, he does everything, but, I mean, he's got to find a way to, when he gets those open layups, he's got to convert. Yeah, oh, yeah. I he's agree. Five for 23 yeah. or something. I mean, he has some horrible statistic uh, right now from field goals. Right now, he's just, like, throwing it at the backboard. Like, <laughs> have some finesse, man. Jeez. Uh, so, I mean, best of three. Kevin, you still sticking to Cavs and yeah, six? Yeah, so I got, well, no, I, I switched it up, man. I got the Cavs and seven. I think that if they bring it back to Cleveland, there's just going to be no stopping them. I, I feel like. I got to agree. I, I feel like the Bulls just missed their chance in game four. Like, if they go up 3-1, I think they got it. But 2-2 two, two against LeBron, you still feel like you're losing that series. Yeah, At least I, I agree. Do. I agree. So, Torrance? I was going to say the same. I'm going to be different. <laughs> I, I, I really think, I think Cleveland going to win this series, too. But just because you guys said that, I mean, I, like it's, it's hard to see LeBron lose two games like that, especially uh, one of them being in Cleveland. Yeah. I even say uh, I say Cavs and six, man. I don't even think it's Oof. gonna be. I just don't think it's gonna be a seven. I think, like you said, Bulls. That was a punch in the gut game that they needed at home, and now you know you have a more of a confident team, and then you have another game in which um, Kyrie is resting, and especially if Gasol is questionable and doesn't play, yeah, man, Cavs gonna they're gonna end early now because they have a little bit more momentum coming in. Quick sidebar: Does Tibbs get fired if they lose the series? I th- in my opinion, yeah. I think Tibbs is gone anyways. Oh, yeah. I, I yeah. think he's gone anyways. Even if he doesn't get fired, I think he's going to leave with the problems that he's having with the who's it, the GM. Yeah, he's just not happy with the way things are going, which is a, definitely a shame because in in my you know in my recent history, obviously I didn't I don't remember Zen Master Phil, yeah. you know, or, or or anything like that. But you know, he he's been the guy. He's been the guy in Chicago. You know, all the all the players from what I hear and what I read love love you know. Playing for them and working with them, so you know I, I truthfully I love NBA basketball. I love NBA playoff basketball because you see a lot of defense and every team that Tibbs is with, man, they they just know how to play defense. What was it? There was a 164 or 68 total points the other night. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that's that's yeah. ridiculous. You know, you go out on the West Coast and you watch those games, they're shootouts. They're, you know, 100 and whatever. Teams winning by 30 points. You won't see that. You know, you won't see that with, with any team that LeBron's on or any team that Tibbs is coaching. Yeah, I, I think it's just a really unfortunate situation. I mean, Tibbs is top five coach in the league. but that's Easy. Uh, you know, I think Gar and, and, and Pax are just taking for granted the fact that they have a good coach because – before this, it was Vinny Del Negro. Oh, I don't know if you remember him. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah, yeah, Scott Skiles. I mean, like, <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just like I, I don't know who you're gonna get. I mean, some people like uh, Hoiberg from Iowa State. They got bounced in the first round in the tournament this year. So, just hey, they got them. bounced against a good team, though. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Don't sleep on those guys. Yeah. So, I mean, you you mentioned. Out west, and during the break, you had some you had some strong thoughts of this uh, this Clippers Rockets series. If, if anyone's been watching the the Rockets, all they've been doing is fouling and not really Haka competing. DeAndre. Haka DeAndre. I mean, they're down down here. They got blown out last night again. But this this Haka DeAndre is unbearable. Yeah, and I mean, you're taking your best player. Well, arguably your best player. I mean. Actually, it's probably not even arguable. James Harden is a monster. But um, you're taking Dwight Howard, a key figure off the floor because, you know, they don't want to do the, They don't want what's happening to the Clippers to come back to them by just, you know, fouling the worst foul shooter in, on, on the floor. Um, I think that I personally think that this is ridiculous. This isn't basketball. These guys are getting paid millions and millions of dollars to go out there and play basketball. And what we're watching is a free throw contest. You know, yeah. like, like seriously, like if you think that that fans, you know, want to keep paying all this money to come see an NBA playoff game decided by if a guy can hit 28 free throws in the first half, which is beyond ridiculous and then to end up with 35 or, or so or mm-hmm. even more so at the end of the game I don't know truthfully I turned it off man I couldn't watch it it's yeah, I haven't watched much of that at all the series itself hasn't been competitive and then you add in the free throw thing but I mean like DeAndre Jordan's gonna get paid like 15 million a year starting in his next contract the dude shoots less than 40% from free throws I like I, I don't know when it's your job and you're practicing every single day how you can't at least get half 
or 55 percent? Is that asking too much? Am well, I crazy? I mean, just think about it, man. Like his his hands have to be enormous. That oh, he's yeah. he's an enormous human being. Sure. He's he, what is he? Six nine, six eight, six nine, six ten, somewhere uh, in there. He's, yeah, at least six ten. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You, you think about it like. You put uh, a bucket up on, on a little ledge, and then you put, you know, uh, a tennis ball in your hand, and you try and make every single one of them. I, I'll, I get, I'll take 50%. I, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll bet on myself. Fair, fair <laughs> enough, fair enough. But at the same time, that that's not as easy as you think. And especially when you're struggling with something, you got 20, you know, what is it, 30,000 fans yeah. roaring down it's your... Mental, dude, it's yeah. mental, and, and, and it really is. As, as many free throws as you can make, you know, it's not easy to do it in front of 30,000 people when you're, you know, you're getting paid a ridiculous amount of money. There is so much stress on you. Well, and a thing I, I, I saw on ESPN, another point is, like, think about his teammates. Like, he keeps going up to line, you know, keeps yeah. missing free throws. It's like, come on, man, like, make your free throws. Like, I mean, that, if he's like, I think the other night, what was he, 14 or 19 of 34? 14 of 34? Something, Something like yeah. that. I mean, it didn't matter. I mean, they were winning the game by 30 anyway, but... I mean, it's just, I, I don't know. I, I, just, I don't want the Clippers to win just because of that. And even if the Rockets advance, you can do the same thing with Howard. So, I don't, I don't know. I mean, that series hasn't been competitive at all. It looks like the Clippers are going to escape, which I was I kind of like the Spurs. I'm a Spurs like sympathizer. I'm not a fan because that would be a bandwagon fan, but that was a rough way for them to go out all last week. I yeah, I mean. Yeah. Well, you, you like Chris Paul. I was Torrance. happy for him because, yeah. like, it just because of his legacy. I mean, obviously, like, we was talking about this, too. If he didn't hit that shot, then he would have just kept getting a clown about just being this great player but never mm -hmm. being able to go far in playoffs. I mean, it's the same yeah. thing with Carmelo Anthony. But Chris Paul, if it's something I like about Chris Paul, he has probably the best competitive spirit by far in the game. The way he approaches the game and just – how hard he plays, just his mentality is top notch, and I think he I mean he deserves to go far. I mean, just Blake Griffin too. They have so much talent. They have a good coach. I like Doc Rivers a lot since he was in Boston, and it's just you know you you need to see them you know go somewhere because they they have a real good team. You know, I just want to see them go to the next step. So yeah, I mean, I think they're gonna make it to the finals, and whoever they might be playing, whoever winner of Memphis and Golden State. Memphis is taking. Taking there Memphis is Memphis. nothing to sleep on. Uh, yeah. Dude, I, I'm telling you, that's that is my dark horse to win it all. Right there. Really? I mean, and it's not even a dark horse because they're they're legit, man. They got a they got a good veteran core. I took I told my friends last uh last year that Memphis was gonna win that series against the Thunder. And they 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 almost did, man. They took mm -hmm. it all the way to seven games, seven. right? Yeah. Yeah, took it all the way to seven games against arguably the best player in the game. And, and Kevin Durant, you know, you could put LeBron in there, but at the same time, a healthy Kevin Durant is, nasty. I mean, yeah, he's nasty, oh, man. Yeah. And then you put uh, Russell Westbrook in there and Serge, and, and you really think, how did anybody beat that team? And then, let alone, how did the Grizzlies take them to seven games? Well, now, you know, they, they, they all have a year uh, more under their, uh, under their belt, and then they pick up Danny Green, like, halfway through. Is that who it was? Uh, they got Jeff Green. Jeff Green, uh, sorry, yeah, sorry, Jeff go. Green, Jeff yeah. Green, yeah, and uh, and he's been you know playing outside of his mind too, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I mean they they're I mean they, Randolph, you know, yeah, Mike Conley back. I think that was huge too. Huge. He, he actually knows how to guard Steph Curry. Yeah, and yeah. That, you got you got Marcus Gasol who's just a monster too. And yeah, the Grizzlies. I always thought of them as like the Bulls in the West, just because they they'll grind you down yep. and they'll play that defense and. I've always wondered about that in the playoffs just because I feel like like a team like the Grizzlies and the Bulls, they don't have like another gear in the playoffs. That always worries me. But right now, Memphis, they're they're playing as good as anyone. And yeah. this is really the first adversity Golden State's faced all year. I mean, they won 67 games, now being down 2-1 in Memphis. I mean, th this is a huge game coming up was it tonight. I'm assuming it's tonight. Yeah, uh, Clippers game was um, yeah. Last night, yeah. So it's the uh, the Wizards game and and the Grizzlies tonight. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if the Grizzlies win tonight, man. Like, I mean, it's hard hard for them to hard to see them losing three in a row with with how with their culture and and how tough they are. So yeah, speaking about this this Wizards team though. Oh yeah, I mean. 
Yeah. Even even if the Bulls even if the Bulls make it past, you know, the Cavs, we are staring down uh, an angry Wizards team right now without John Wall. You yeah. know, I mean that shot that Paul put in the other night. Obviously, I love what he said after the game. oh yeah, I love what he said. yeah, that was. Yeah, <laughs> I, I love that. I love that too, man. But you know, it the Bulls cannot beat the Wizards, man. It right. just seems like it, you know. And 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 now the Atlanta Hawks. I don't know what I'm more more impressed with, you know, the way that the Wizards have been playing, or just the collapse of this Hawks team. Like yeah. I just feel like. You know, they were a great regular season team, and, you know, I was a big fan of them. Uh, really like, uh, I really like Teague, a uh, big fan of Jeff Teague, and um, I, I just, I'm so let down at this at this effort that they've been given. And Steve, we talked about that even like earlier, just like the Hawks are just this regular season team, but when it comes to playoffs, I mean, I just really feel like they don't have that oomph in them. Like, no team yeah. is scared. There's nobody on the team you could just say, we got to watch out for that guy. Like, right. You know, you have, like, we got to watch out for LeBron. Uh, we got to watch out for John Wall and then, you know, Paul Pierce. But it's like the Hawks are like, okay. Yeah, just yeah. Collect, collect collective. Effort. Yeah. yeah, collective effort. Yeah, and that... You know, it's like the angel question: Who's going to take the last shot for them? I mean, is it is it Teague? I know. Do you get it to Horford or Millsap? Millsap I mean, Corver. I, yeah, Corver. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's a no doubter. <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> Give it to the guy. If, who's if we're playing two K, Corver shooting. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I mean, they remind me kind of the Pacers last year. The Pacers, you know, got that one seed and then kind of fell off. I don't know. Lance started blowing in people's ears, and and uh, they they sort of didn't live up to their potential, but. I don't know. Paul Pierce, they just dusted him off, and he keeps hitting big shots. Hall of Famer, man. What what else can you say about him? Uh, the truth. Yeah, yeah there's. Then uh, what Dennis Schroeder said something about, oh man, that was a uh, that was a lucky shot that Paul Pierce said. I've been making that shot uh, for 13 years. Oh, yeah, man. yeah, he's <laughs> making that shot since Schroeder was a little kid. I mean, <laughs> yeah. he's that dude's a Terminator, man. Yeah. All right, so lots of NBA to talk about. Torrance, this is our last show on a line I drive. It's been a good ride. Great run, man. Couldn't uh, connect with a better, uh, better uh, cast where everybody's gone. But oh, yeah, everyone's gone. Everyone <laughs> left us. We couldn't even have a, a proper last show because right. I don't know. They're like studying or something. I don't know what that's all about. Wait, what is that? What does that mean? Yeah, I, I don't know. I didn't come here to place no school, but <laughs> yeah. So that's how we got for this week. I'm gonna say I'm gonna get off before I say something stupid. Uh, We'll be back. We've hired a great crew for next year. Joey Gelman will be back, if anyone remembers him. He was in Spain for who, who a semester. Is, who is this kid? Joey Gelman. <laughs> from, so he'll be back hosting. We'll uh, keep posted to DailyLion.com. Keep posted for this Illini baseball team. Their season keeps going, even though we're not on the air. Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Shameless plug. I love it. So that, that'll be coming up. Keep tuned with that. Just like that, we're out. <laughs>